So I'm gonna show you how you can take any dashboard and make it look 10 times better. This will not only improve the look and feel of your dashboard, it will also improve the usability of your wall panel. You're going to be able to find the full code on my blog post. If you wanna watch this video ads free, you can do it in the link down in the description below in my courses membership. And if you stick to the end of the video, there'll also be a coupon code if you haven't joined yet. But now, let's roll the intro. Let me show you how this works. On the left hand side, we have the Home Assistant standard dashboard tiles. On the right hand side, we have what we are gonna be making together in this video. When they're off, the kitchen light looks blue. On the right hand side, there's a grayed out picture. Now if I turn them on, you can see that on top over here, we now have a beautiful lighted version. And down below, we have something a little bit weird. We have a GIF. And you can see there's a little animation when someone's uh, fiddling around with a light bulb. So I'm gonna show you how you can actually build these two tiles. But more importantly, really, I'm gonna show you how you can build any customized tile yourself. A prerequisite is the Home Assistant Community Store, AKA Hacks. And in Hacks, if you go to the front end, and if you search for the uh, button, you can see the button card, this card is what we'll be using in this video to make that tile. To check that you do have it installed correctly, go on free dots, edit dashboard, add a new card. If you search for custom, you should find the button card. At that point, we're ready to start coding. The first thing you need to do is get your entity ID. This will be the entity that you want to control. So you're going to need to type in entity colon. If you don't remember the name of the entity, don't worry. Just type in light if you're doing a light and you've got the drop down over here so you can pick anyone you want. Now that you've got the entity filled in, you can see it over here. This pretty much at the moment looks similar to what we have in the normal button card, but now we're gonna be customizing it. So I wanna take the name away, this name over here. So to do that, I'm using a little trick. I'm adding an empty space just like this, as you can see it. So that's all disappeared. Now, the other thing I want to do also is I want to, uh, I want the icon to disappear. So this, you can do this by typing in show underscore icon. And again, with the colon, and then you can have like false. If you add true, that will be the default that you will normally have. So by having false, you can see it sort of, it's all completely disappeared. Now at this point, we need to add that background uh, capability. So what I will do now, it will just save at the moment the card. Now we need to get that picture. Now to achieve this, you can use any editing tool. I'm going to be using Canva because that's what I use to do YouTube thumbnails. And uh, what I'm going to be doing is creating a canvas and you can see some of the examples of the canvas that I created in the past. So how to do this is pretty much straightforward. I'm going to show you. So you can add a page in. Um, and then set the specific size. So I'm recommending that you set maybe a square or a rectangle, it really depends on how uh, you wanna show it. And then find a stock image. So it could be kitchen, let's say we want to do a living room. And you should be able to find a lot of examples. You could get something like this. And what we're going to do is uh, right click on it, replace background, so it sort of fills in the whole space. We can change this uh, color over here and make it blank. So now we've got our nice funny image. For your off status, what I would do is I would just duplicate this and so copy and paste it depending on what tool you're using. And um, a trick that I'm using is uh, adding an effect to it. So you can add like an effect, like a uh, tundra effect or whatever effect, basically that makes it look dark. So yeah, you could do like mono for example, this looks quite good. So you just do this effect. So in that way you have an on version and an off version. Now you need to save these files as, as JPEGs and we can upload them into Home Assistant. If you're also interested in the GIF, you can also add a, a GIF in the, exactly the same way. So find a GIF online. You can see I, was, I used this one. I dragged it in, I maximized it, and I just exported in the tool as a, a .gif file. And you can use a GIF in exactly the same way as you could use an image. You also might want to take a picture of your own living room and use that, and it's really up to you. If you find this tip cool, remember to like 
and subscribe and more importantly leave me a comment down below if you're enjoying the content so I actually know what content I need to make in the future. So in Home Assistant the easiest way to uh, upload a file is to go to your file editor that's another add-on if you're new to Home Assistant but you can do this several other ways. Uh, first thing check if you have a www folder a www folder I do have it already if you don't have it please create it. To create a folder you can just click on this uh, new folder button and then just type in the name OK. Once you've created a folder, go into the folder and here upload your image. And you can upload with this sort of arrow up button, upload file, find the files, upload them both or uh, in and then uh, click OK. You're going to need to do them one at a time with file editor. Once you have them here, you should have the full list of all of your uh, icons that you've sort of created. Now let's go back to the dashboard. Three dots, edit dashboard, edit again. Let's type in state. This is going to be the conditional parameter that we need. So if the state is on, then we're going to show a different background if it's off some other background. So this could, you could do this not just with lights, but with anything that has any state. Remember two spaces dash, space again. And then at this point we could put value again with the colon and then I'm going to start with on and you could do the same thing with off. So once you have this on, uh, align to the value again and then type in styles. Go down again, two spaces, so indent from styles and in card and now again indent from card and add background. It's probably easier again as I mentioned at the beginning of the video to copy and paste the code from the blog but you sort of learn it if you type it out yourself and you sort of remember it. So it's good also to type it out, but if you struggle, just, just use the blog. There you go. So use the URL. So I just pasted in from the code, the, uh, this location. So the local you go, is the equivalent of www, so don't change that. Only thing you need to change is the name of the file or whatever you've called it. If you've created a subdirectory, you can do that, add like sub and then slash again but I don't have a subdirectory, so this is how we're sort of uh, looking. So once this is done, now again on the background, there's one more parameter we need to add, which is the background size. So if you see, it's sort of all stretched at, this, at the moment. So let me type it in cover, and we can add like the background size to be cover, so that that will like resize uh, depending on which device you're using it on. Now that this is done, I recommend you to copy and paste for the off setting. So just change onto off. Same thing for the name, I've called it kitchen off. So we have that status done at the same time. Now there's one more thing we need to add, which is the style, which is going to be how big you want the tile to be. So I'm adding something that's good called styles. And this is going to work regardless of uh, if it's on or off. So you can have even the styles changing if they're on or off but I'm going to have them static. The styles, two spaces, card, again, two spaces, and then here we can add width. Um, I'm adding 230 pixels, and then the height around, I think 250 was the pixel that I was using. Cool, so now you can see it changing dynamically, so if you want to make it square, you can do 250, you can basically do whatever you want. Now that if we save this and we click done, you can see that this is uh, exactly the same as this. And if we turn the light off and we turn the kitchen lights off, so these are all based on the kitchen and dining lights, you can see them all turning off. Um, if they turn on again, they will uh, turn on as you can see from here. You can make a whole dashboard with just these tiles and I would really, really recommend you do them and please email me some photos of the dashboards that you create after seeing this video. If you do do them, please, if you want me to share them with everyone else, I will do that in a future video. I would love to review your dashboards that you created thanks to these tips. I'm gonna leave you with another awesome dashboard video over here. This is Joe from Smarter Makers, and you'll see right at the bottom here the coupon code, discount coupon code for the courses membership if you wanna rewatch this and get a lot more value on that platform. You can find it in the description down below and the code also. So see you next time. Ciao.